Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between. Grab your vices, chill out, and let's get straight to it. This is episode 50 of Straightforward with Miss B. And today I have a special guest. As you know, back about nine or ten episodes ago, um, episode 40 to be exact, we kind of started this mental health series called Disorderly Conduct. Um, so this is the second part of this series. So I am welcoming with me today, uh, Miss Wendy M. Hello, Wendy. Hi. Hey there. Hello, Miss uh, Miss <laughs> Wendy. Miss um, Wendy is a mental health counselor, uh, born and raised in Miami, Florida. She has a master's degree in counseling psychology, specializing in addiction. Um, her experience includes um, crisis stability, ooh, stabilization, along with long term and short term intensive outpatient substance abuse treatment uh, with military veterans and adolescents. And um, she served clients in the Washington State and Florida area. So thank you for being here with me again. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> So today, it's been a lot going on in regards to the quote-unquote hashtag Tommy Tuck 4 incident um, that happened. Oh, is, that, is that the name of it, the Tommy Tuck 4? I think that's the hash, the official hashtag, I believe, for it, but okay. I could be wrong. i just seen that a lot, you know, as far as social media and in the headlines, so... Um, but yeah, so we wanted to talk about um, this incident today and dive into it um, a little bit and um, see how it kind of relates to um, or associates with um, disorders such as PTSD, um, trauma, body um, dysmorphic disorder, depression and anxiety. And I think that this was like, you know, usually... Usually when I do talk about topics, it definitely, you know, I try to stick to hot topics and everything um, that's going on in the news. Um, and especially stuff that kind of affects or impacts the black culture. Um, but however, um, I definitely always want to be as informative as I possibly can um, so that we can, you know, definitely be educating, educating the listeners not only entertaining them, but educating them as well. Um, mm -hmm. So, I guess to start off, so, um, basically, the most recent headlines, for those of you who have been following this story, um, there were, initially the news stated that there are four individuals who traveled from Myrtle, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, um, to Mexico, and what was the name? Matamoros or Matamoros. Yes. <laughs> Matamoros, <Metamoros>. Mexico. <laughs> um, which you is Matamoros, um, which was right across the border from Texas. Um, so they had basically traveled there. Um, apparently the female of the crew, she was going down for a tummy tuck or co alleged tummy tuck procedure and so she had friends, um, some close friends that were traveling, you know, the long distance with her. And um, when they got there, when they got there, apparently something happened and people from the cartel, some gentlemen from the Mexican, one of the Mexican cartel, I believe the group was called the Scorpion Group, um, they basically jumped out of the vehicle on them, um, shot at them. I believe two of the Americans were killed. Um, and the other two, I believe all four of them was put on the back of a pickup truck and basically taken to some undisclosed location. And um, then I believe a couple of days later, they were found. Two of them were found alive, but two were dead. So the individual names basically um, was um, Sh Shahid or Shahid Woodard, Woodard and Zendale Brown. Those were the two that were shot and killed. And Eric Williams and Latavia Washington McKee, 
um, basically um, are the two survivors. They say that Williams was shot in the leg, however, um, but he and McGee escaped with their lives and are now recovering across the border in a Texas hospital. And I'm pulling this information just for, you know, copyright purposes and give everybody the credit. This is from the Daily Mail in the U.K., um, <clears throat> basically the bodies of Woodard and Brown, um, they were basically put, picked up by authorities. I believe they are back in the, their bodies are back in the States now. So, you know, I pray for their families. We send our condolences to their family. Um, however, there was also a by bi- innocent Mexican bystander. Her name was Early Servando. Um, She was killed. I believe she may have been like an officer in her local church. And uh, it was just unfortunate for her to be, you know, innocent bystander in this um, situation. Um, It also came out here recently out in the news that five of the what they call themselves the Scorpion Gulf Cartel assassins who were allegedly responsible for the kidnap and murder. Um, they were tied up and they were dumped um, actually by the cartel themselves um, and left them in the street, basically right where this um, the initial incident happened, along with a note that was left as well. The cartel narco bosses um, apologized for the innocent, I mean, for the um, incident. Basically, they just wanted, I guess, you know, the public to know that they, they don't believe they have ethics, you know, ethics um, as well in their organization. And they don't, they don't fool with, um, you know, killing innocent people. So they apologize in this letter also. Um, I don't know if that's, <laughs> I don't know if that's commendable oh or not. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you see my face? I'm like, what? Oh, okay. <laughs> we have, we, but you know what? going dating back to italian gangsters they had a cold yeah Mm -hmm. so maybe they maybe they have a cold right we'll go with we can go with that yeah and you and you would think hope you would think the black culture you know all of our young teenager young adults out and thugs out here killing people they just kill anybody mamas grandmamas kids (laughs) you know what i'm saying it's like where's they where's the cold you know but anyway, that's that's a total. Oh, and, and that's exactly what I see here. It's a, a twisted moral code explains the cartel's apology. Mm-hmm. So they they have a code, okay? Yeah. So um um so basically, yeah, they basically dump you know these five quote unquote assassins out in the street, um, so that the authorities can pick them up. They basically kick them out of the you know out of their organization, um for these heinous acts and uh, we'll see what transpire transpire from there. So just speaking about the incident itself though, um, it was definitely an unfortunate situation. I can just imagine traveling to a different country going to, you know, no matter what, what I'm going down there for, whether it's a vacation or getting some medical procedure um, and, to be captured and kidnapped by, you know, by a drug cartel. Like that, that would be such a traumatic experience for, for me. If that was to happen, I could just imagine me if I was able to escape the situation alive. I would just, that would be in my dreams every night, probably. And I wonder if these two survivors, you know, will possibly just experience that, you know, experience that going forward. They'll definitely have PTSD. Like one of the main symptoms of PTSD is reliving the situation, Mm -hmm. right? So the dreams and the flashbacks, I can't imagine that they would not. They witnessed their friends dying. But what trumps all of that is education. We have to be more educated and this means we, everybody, young, old, doesn't matter who we are, on where we're going. You're going into a foreign country. And you need to be more educated on the towns that you're going through, maybe the the, the, the criminal activity 
that occurs in this town instead of just hyper focused on whatever your mission is to do, whether it's vacationing, surgery, whatever it may be. Traveling internationally is dangerous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As an American, period. It, no yeah, anywhere. Any, yeah, anywhere. Yeah. yeah. So you, <laughs> you need to be well aware of where you're going, and especially, especially if you're going via vehicle, mm -hmm. you know, via a road trip. You need to be educated on, on the route that you're taking. Right. And, but this this goes back to when we want something so bad that we don't care and we don't take the time to do the proper research on the process of maintain of achieving a goal. Right. You you want your surgery. And you don't give a damn what you got to go through to get it. Mm -hmm. Right. So for those that's listening, um, like just talk about a little bit, a little bit about, you know, PTSD kind of giving the, you know, meaning definition of it and how can, or it, you know, what ways do people cope with it? Is it something that, you know, they prescribe medicine for, you know, of course, therapy will probably, you know, will be needed for these two survivors so as well. Post-traumatic stress disorder, which people use very loosely, right? But it's a mental health condition that's triggered by a, ter a terrifying event. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, a threat to your life or a threat to someone else's life. And it's either experiencing the event or witnessing the event. So symptoms may include flashbacks, nightmares, severe anxiety, as well as uncontrollable thoughts about the event. Okay. Not to mention a big one is avoiding anything that you would think would cause the event to reoccur. Right. Even if it's irrational. Like even if like a soldier would be in Afghanistan and those events that happen in war mm -hmm. that we know won't happen here, mm -hmm. right? Um, for example, I remember I had a client that he said that during the war, the opposing side would have dead animals in the street, and mm -hmm. these dead animals would have bombs inside of them. Mm -hmm. But when he was driving down the street in the U.S., he he would see a dead animal in the street and automatically assume yeah, revert back to that memory. Know, yeah. Yes, yes. So they have difficulty adjusting and coping. Therapy can help, you know, with the anxiety and depression that comes along with that. You know, as we say, you may need something to calm your nerves, as the old people would say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, and anti-anxiety meds can help with that because anxiety is just not what people think it is as far as being hyperactive or nervous. Anxiety has a lot to do with ruminating thoughts, mm -hmm. right? Those thoughts that and you are unable to control them, which deters your focus and you can't complete a task. Yeah, or you can't, or it interrupts your daily functioning because you can't stop thinking about whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it would be something as terrifying as watching your friends die. Yeah. Can you imagine? I can't imagine it. I can't imagine because I, can't I imagine sometimes it. my mind go back to an incident that I saw where um, back this was like my college days, and I just remember. I remember sitting outside of Club Warehouse. I don't know people who's listening, familiar with Atlanta. There used to be a club on Marietta Street near the Omni Hotel um, called The Warehouse. I believe it might have been called Tracks or something like that previously. Um, but, yeah, we sitting out. This is back in the 90s, you know, and I believe that maybe the same night I saw Tupac on the dance floor in the club. Oh, but, 
it was just a lot going on. <laughs> it was a lot going on, and I used to be that's a memorable right that's outside memorable. in the mix. I was in the mix, child, and I just remember me and my friends. We just outside, you know, after the club parking lot pimping. We sitting on the, you know, sitting on the hood of a car, just watching, you know, watching the other cars go by and everything, having fun. The let out, yeah, the, the let out. We was at a let out, and then basically somebody would start shooting, and I just remember a guy dropping to the ground in front of me. Not like, he wasn't like 50 feet in front of me, but he was in a good eye distance for me to see him just fall down in the street. You know what I'm saying? So it's like seeing somebody just get shot or something in front of you and seeing them just lay out, it's like, the fuck? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Absolutely. It's a lot to Absolutely. deal. It's a lot to deal with, and I don't even think I think I was probably so probably drunk and high that I didn't really process it. Process it at the time. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, but you processing it now at forty something. Right when it comes up, you know what I mean. When that memory yeah. just kind of a flashback mm-hmm. or whatever. But yeah, so I can just imagine <laughs> going something that's going through something that's har- um horrifying as you know, these Mexican Mexicans coming and just shooting you and then putting you on the back of a pickup truck. You can't speak no Spanish, so you, you don't video? know what the fuck they talking about. Yeah, it's just... Video? Yeah, I saw the just video. Just drag the body like... Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't that. <laughs> Awful. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Awful. So, mm. anyway... um. Another aspect of this story, um, and I think we we tap, tapped on it in our pre-production meeting. <laughs> pre-production meeting. Um, there's been other, like, um, you know, other bits of information that has been coming out, and I think that the Mexican authorities themselves, I don't know about U.S. authorities, but I know that the Mexican law enforcement um, agents, um, they are also actually investigating the possibility, um, what it says, possibility that the members of the cartel kidnapped the Americans thinking that they were encroaching on their turf. Because apparently um, it was revealed that several of the four or even all four of them uh, for the Americans, they got a lengthy rap sheet, criminal background, dealing with drug, drug trafficking. So now the Mexican authorities say, hey, we can't rule this out because that's a possibility that that may have been another reason why they was traveling down to, you know, Meta- what is it, Metamoros. 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 So in other words, she may have been getting a getting a cosmetic procedure done, and at the same time, <laughs> we can handle some business on the right. Side. May as well because we're down there. Since we down there, we need to find out who the plugs are. We, we down there, yeah, yeah, we down there. How do, you know? How do we? How do you even find out the plugs? I guess everything is on the internet now, huh? Snapchat and maybe she found a plug through maybe one of because you know this isn't the first time that she's traveled to Mexico to have a cosmetic you know procedure done she's done it in the past maybe she have kind of met met some people you know what I mean met some people down there a couple of nurses who might got to hook up somewhere you know and say hey you know I'm going mm-hmm. I'm scheduled to do this tummy tuck mm-hmm. hey y'all want to go down there and you know. Try to find the plug. <laughs> hey. Hmm. That's hey. A, that sounds like a more legitimate story to me. <laughs> like, like, yeah. Cause I'm she I could understand started. like why all of them needed to travel with her to get a Tommy tub. It didn't need all of them people. No, it did not. And then it also It cannot be ruled mm-hmm. out where rooters outlet Ruder said it cannot be ruled out that the attack against the Americans mm-hmm. could be directly linked to drug trafficking yeah and that's just it and that's just it and the the, the cartel may have 
you know, may have, like I said, um, thought that they were somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Maybe some other black people that they probably had dealings with before, whatever the case may be, got them mixed up. Because, you know, a couple of these guys had dreads in their head. and You know what I'm saying? So, And, it, and it's so sad because people change, right? Mm-hmm. Like if, if they had these lengthy rap sheets, people change. And it could be just as innocent as, Come on, y'all. Come ride with me. Mm-hmm. Let's go to Mexico. It's a nice little city. You know, get my, you know, before we get the surgery, we can go get some chips and salsa. Right. And eat some Mexican food. You know, and y'all make sure I'm good. You know, and we come back. Yeah. It could, it could be just as simple as that, but then our past comes back to haunt us. Mm-hmm. Because you got these lengthy. I'm looking it up now. These minor drugs. Yeah, they minor drugs. The mm-hmm. But now we can't rule it out because you have gone in the middle of nowhere. Middle of nowhere. Where no one else would go. Right. To go get cosmetic surgery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then okay. also there there was um, news that came out. There was a fifth individual, a female. She was actually on CNN, I believe, and she did an interview. Oh. And she actually, you know, kind of uh, gave the public a little bit more information about what happened. So she traveled with them from South Carolina. By the time they got to Texas, though, um, they ended up putting her in a hotel room because um, she did not have her her ID. And, of course, before you, you know, cross the border, you will have to show Border Patrol um, your ID in order to get to the other side. Um, so they left her at the hotel, but she said they told her, this was early like in the morning, they told her, hey, we'll be back in about 15 to 30 minutes. However, she f- ended up falling asleep um, for a few hours. By the time she wake up, no one had returned to the room yet. And she thought that that was very strange. She said she went to the front desk. She was like, hey, did you see, you know, my friends, my, some black people come back through here, you know, return to the hotel? And the front desk clerk was like, no, or whatever. And so she, you know, I guess she ended up calling authorities after that, after that point. Um, but, yeah. But I'm like, if hmm. they was going across the border still, But see, I don't, I don't know the, I don't know how close Brownsville. Apparently, Brownsville is probably right there. So maybe, okay, we'll be back in thirty minutes. Maybe they was just going across the border real quick. You know what I'm saying? Peep out the scene, what? peep out the scene, or something. I don't know. That's oh, what I probably. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And then they was gonna come back and you know check on her. But you went across the border. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. A tummy yeah. and a tummy took procedure takes longer than thirty minutes. Well, if they're gonna sit there and wait, maybe they were dropping her off. That that could be true too. Mm-hmm. They could have just been dropping her off and say, "Okay, we'll come back to get you." Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All this shit sound crazy. But um, the more you process it, right? The more you break down, right? The more you break down every day, new details keep coming out. So it's like, what the fuck? Um, but anyway, a more serious issue though, when it comes down to women who do seek out, you know, these procedures, um, a lot of times, um, as in the case of Miss McGee here. This was not her first procedure. She's been to Mexico in the past um, to have, you know, some type of cosmetic surgery. Um, So she was kind of used to it, I guess. You know what I'm saying, in a sense. Um, But a lot of times females don't necessarily realize that they may be dealing with body dysmorphic disorder. and. Explain that a little bit more of what that is. 
So it's a mental health condition where a person spends a lot of time worrying about flaws in their appearance. And those flaws often are unnoticeable to other people, right? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a delusion, a, a fixed belief that you believe is real and is sort of irrational. So, um, and it's common in teenagers and in young adults, and it affects both men and women. And of course, we know that is all exasperated by social media, mm -hmm. right? So the symptoms of that disorder is you're worrying a lot about a specific area of your body. Mm -hmm. um, you spend a lot of time comparing your looks with other people. You look at yourself in mirrors a lot or you avoid mirrors altogether. Mm -hmm. um, you go to a lot of efforts to conceal your flaws. For example, you could be like spending a lot, long time combing your hair or applying makeup or choosing clothes because you're trying to conceal a certain flaw. Mm -hmm. that no one else notices but you and um yeah and if it affects your daily life including work or social life and your relationship and it begins to consume you um as an example you go to a dangerous small town in mexico right <laughs> you risk yeah you risking your people. life going risking yeah your life mm -hmm. yeah you're risking your life Mm -hmm. Just so you can get, you know, get a flat stomach. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Right. So right. there is a possibility that, you know, hey, maybe, you know, Miss McGee may have also been suffering with this disorder as well, you know. and You know, I, I hate to go there mm -hmm. because so common and not the disorder, but cosmetic surgery is a dime a dozen now, right? So that's what that's what brings to the surface other questions about this. Why'd you have to go to Mexico? Right. You know, there are so many doctors that specialize in cosmetic surgery. And I don't know the specifics, but from what I understand, it is not hard for a physician to be certified in cosmetic surgery. Like they don't have to be a board certified surgeon mm -hmm. to perform cosmetic surgery. They do have to have some type of credential acquired to do plastic surgery, right. but they don't have to be a board certified surgeon. I know that for a fact. And because it's so common in our generation, despite who you are, black, white, Hispanic, it doesn't matter. The doctor, it's a competitive field now. Yeah. So the prices are cheaper than they were 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So why'd you have to go to Mexico? It's just, it's, it's, it's I don't know. It's, it's strange. Why'd you she, have to risk she your needed life? That, she wanted that extra, that extra discount. <laughs> and it's income tax time. Yeah. Let's not forget that. So yeah. you don't want to spend the whole check. You don't want to spend the whole check. She wanted an extra, yeah, extra yeah, discount. Nice. And so she went to Mexico. And she was familiar yeah. with Mexico. You know what I'm saying? So it's Yeah. Yeah. It ain't never that serious for me though. <laughs> no, no, thank you. No, you're right. <laughs> We're trying to live out here. Right. Like, no yeah. thank you. At all. And then, you know, and, and it trickles down to you have anxiety because you have the ruminating thoughts about it. You can't get it off your mind. Mm -hmm. You know, you're always thinking about, I wish my butt were bigger. I wish my hips was wider. I wish my waist was smaller. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not, I'm not living up to society standards because my body doesn't look like everyone else's. Mm -hmm. it's a touchy it's a touchy subject it really is because it's so common now right. everyone you see has the same body shape and it's a that's what be getting me I'm like what the everybody fuck everybody has the same and I can't, can't, and can't lie perfect. you know I can't lie hell I thought about getting it myself but 
the more and more I think about the shit and then I look around on social media and just people, you know, out in public or whatever. And I'm like me being who I am and like to be, I'm usually kind of like a, you know, not stand out, but just an individual, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I like individuality, being myself, being Mm -hmm. different. I'm like, no, I don't really want to look like everybody else. Like, so if I would I go in the office and be like, <laughs> they'd be like, who you want to look like? I, Myself. I don't want all my pants to have an elastic waist. Yeah. Because if not, then the pair of pants you have, if they're not leggings, you have to get them alterated. Right. Because or you're going to be wearing skirts and dresses all the time. Mm-hmm. Proportion as your hips. Right. Yeah. And and, and 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 let's compare that, right? Because a plastic surgeon said to me, because I had like liposuction when I was twenty something. And so this was twenty five years ago before all of this, right? And I remember the plastic surgeon said to me, but I, I came outside with older girls, mm-hmm. right? So they were already having plastic surgery. And 20 years ago was what? The late 90s, right? And I remember the plastic surgeon said to me, plastic surgery is when you've done everything you could do naturally. Mm -hmm. And you you have stubborn areas. Like if you get in a tummy tuck, you have loose skin. Yeah. Because you've tried to do the sit-ups. You've lost the weight. You know, the the skin is sagging. And there's nothing you can do without loose skin. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's supposed to be like when you've done everything that you could do naturally and then you say, okay, let me go and um, get a consultation yeah, and see how I can improve. These what I've already worked on. Stubborn. Mm-hmm. Specifically stubborn. Right now it's just an easy way out. Because then you see a lot of people have the surgery and then they gain even the gastric bypasses and then they gain the weight back. Yeah. Yeah, I think my uh one of my mom's friends is getting well. She's like my auntie, but she, I think she's gonna get the the lap band or some shit. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Next mm-hmm. week, you know what I mean. But hey, <clears throat> I don't. I don't think anything is wrong with that. Yeah, I don't think um, nothing wrong with that. Especially, especially opinion. if you you know obese and. You got health issues, you know what I mean? It's like fifty pounds is a lot of weight to lose. Mm-hmm. And when you start that journey, not saying it's not possible, we know it's possible. But when you start that journey, and it just seems as though you're putting in a lot of hard work, and it ain't coming off, I'm cool to get the band for real. Yeah, I'm cool with getting the band. The band, cut it, do whatever you got to do. but but i've seen men and women Mm -hmm. life who have said oh yeah i've had the surgery and i gained the weight back yeah because it goes all back to being psychological Mm -hmm. yeah and then people just like you said just kind of take the easy way out and just go back under the knife you know to get it Mm -hmm. fixed and then the the repetition of that it becomes the dysmorphic side of right. it because m- right. mentally you're like something's wrong with me constantly. You know what I mean? Oh, something's wrong with me. Oh, I, I just had a tummy people. tuck, but now my nose look crooked. Let me go get my nose fixed. Oh, I got my nose fixed too. Damn, look like my I, I'm getting crow's feet on the side of my eyes. Now I need to go get a facelift. Oh, no. Right. <laughs> well. Listen, I'm not opposed to that. They can lift this up a little bit. See, there you go. Like, You're not helping the people that's listening. <laughs> you keep talking about so I'm not opposed. <laughs> Wait. Now, All you got to do is just put the tape. Just put the tape on your, the little tape you can wear under your hair and the wigs, and it just pull your skin. <laughs> pull listen, your skin lift up. up under here. <laughs> lift this up up under here. Just put just a mini, a mini facelift. You know, I am not opposed to plastic surgery i'm all for it it's just that when it when it becomes an obsession yeah and when you are consumed by it mm-hmm. 
you know, or when you crossing the border for it. Right. And getting kidnapped and killed for That's it. That's the point, yeah. And you ain't even yeah. got the oh, goddamn tummy t- and you didn't even get the tummy tuck yet and you getting kicked that big kill for it. She got something. Right. That's too much. Trauma for the rest of her life. Mm-hmm. I just you know, I just I just wish that do the research and make sure it's safe. If if this is what you want to do just make sure you're safe doing it. Cover all the ground. Right. Yeah. Well, it's sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is sad. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I guess we're going to go wrap up this episode. We was okay. going to talk about, additionally, the Lindsay Clancy situation for those of you um, who hadn't heard about it? Basically, this is the lady who was married to. I think they're still married because I think he's supporting her through all of this. But anyway, married to a Microsoft executive oh. down in Florida, um, and she ended up killing her three kids. Um, three kids, and she jumped out a window. I believe slashed her throat and wrist as well. She ended up breaking her spine, so she now she's paralyzed. However, she has been charged with their deaths. And um, now, basically, she has had a boatload of public support um, because um, the <clears throat> they believe that she uh, may have suffered from what is called uh, postpartum psychosis episode and so it's been a lot of back and forth differences of opinion some people like yeah maybe this did happen to her other people are like no because this situation the murder seems as though it may have been planned to a certain degree um so it's like how could she just possibly have this um abrupt psychotic episode um so it's been a lot of back and forth and i wanted us to get into that but i think that we probably are going to save that for our next um disorderly conduct um episode in the future hopefully it won't be too many more episodes away (laughs) episode 60 60, but but it's very interesting though I wanted to say um, congratulations on your 50th episode. Yes. Uh, I don't know if. Let me put the applause people... in here. Happy 50th episode. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if people understand how hard or how much work and effort goes into podcasting, but it is not easy to put yourself out there in a world that is very competitive and it takes a lot of um, hard work and consistency I guess in anything before you get to that place but like Oprah always say you chase your passion and not the money Yep. Mm -hmm. but you have always been someone that I've admired because you are a go-getter about the baby crap and I'm proud of you, and congratulations on your 50th. Thank, thank you, you for allowing me to be a part of it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're about to make me cry, and I don't cry normally. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a crier. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Um, I receive all of that. Um, I really, really, and truly do. Sometimes when you think that, you know, when you kind of being that person that always the strong one and the person who always seems to be there when, you know, be there for other people and whatever, you know, capacity or whatever, you oftentimes do not receive the love, you know what I'm saying? Or the kind words the from flowers. Other, the flowers from people and I've kind of had to deal with that my entire life. Um, but, yeah, I'm very, very appreciative of those words. And, um, 
yeah, it just it keeps keeps me motivated. You know, motivated to keep going. Sometimes when I don't feel like it or procrastinating, like the entire month of February, I was kind of out of it, you know, dealing with this whole, you know, pipes burst situation in the other room. So it was just a lot going on. And, uh, yeah, so I'm trying to get back on to it. And um, hopefully, you know, we will be on video soon. That's something that I am looking forward to. Hopefully by the summer, hopefully by the summertime, I will have this office area kind of, it's it's like office studio area, but hopefully I'll have everything that I need and all, all of the additional equipment that I need as well um, so that I can go ahead and start doing the podcast, you know, with the video included, included on it as well. So, now, will AG be there? Well, he still will be, he's still in Atlanta. I mean, I'm in Alabama, so. Alabama. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how we would be able to feed him in. Um, AG, I told him, you know, he wouldn't be like a permanent guest co-host or whatever you want to call it. But, yeah, yeah, I'll still bring him on, just depending on what the topic is going to be. You know, mm-hmm. I bring them on. So, yeah, so um, I need to ramp up. I talked to Renee the other day. She was like, dang, what happened to the <laughs> – what happened to our live chats? <laughs> so, yeah, we're going we gonna to get those ramped up again, started. We just need people to – we need people to support. We need to, people to come, you know, subscribe to the YouTube mm-hmm. channel so you can – and turn on your notification bell so you can be notified when we do go live – you know, that way we can have, you know, people in the chat, you know, right. giving their feed. More opinions. More opinions. More yeah. yeah. So it's like, yeah, we need, we need okay. everybody's it's support. Still a baby. Yeah. Still a baby. Still a baby. That is for sure. Um, YouTube now has pod, well, YouTube has their a podcast, I guess, uh, platform as well now. So for those of you who do not utilize any of the podcasts, you know, plat- other streaming platforms like Spotify, Apple, things of that nature, you can always go to YouTube. Um, you can go to YouTube slash, what is it, YouTube.com slash podcast. Um, again, you can just type in straightforward with Miss B and you'll see my podcast playlist on there. Um, so the next one on that playlist will be this episode 50. Um, so you'll be able to, you know, hear the audio of it on YouTube as well. So, you know, just wanted to put that information out there. All right. So we finna get ready to sign out. This has been a great episode. I look forward to talking to Miss Wendy M again. Um, as always. Thank you. Don't forget to follow us on social media at STR, the number eight, FWD, MSB on all social media platforms and subscribe and follow to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google, uh, what else, Stitcher, Amazon, we everywhere. So definitely do that as well. And we will appreciate it. And until next time, peace out. Peace out.